Welcome back everyone to another ESO build video. Today is of course finally the update to the Easy Sork, the first build on my channel to be updated for Flames of Ambition, the new DLC where we are actually getting new champion points. The cap is now 3600 and you can use everything that you've ever earned. You're not stuck at 810 anymore. But don't worry, this build is going to have lots and lots of different alterations and variations to it that will help all players of all levels. And with that in mind, of course, the build is designed for all players and all content. There's nothing in the game that this can't do. You can do solo, you can do group, you can do trials, you can do some of the hardest stuff in the entire game as long as you know what you're doing. But of course, this is designed to be easy to use as well. You've got survival, you've got really good single target, you've got massive AoE, and there's going to be lots of options for where you can and can't go for that kind of stuff as well. So trading off single target for AoE and vice versa, I'm going to show you how to do that. So if you want to see more of this, stay tuned. It's coming right up. So first of all, we're going to go into the stats. Now the stat sheet has changed. We now have an advanced section so we can see all the shiny stuff that you couldn't see before. Your penetration, your dodge roll, block cost, all that kind of stuff. It's all there. So that's really, really handy. So we're going to put on our basic buffs first of all. Resistance buff, spell buff, and of course our potion. We are sitting on a massive 33.8k max magicka, which can go up, of course, if you change some of your stats. And of course, if you get the buffs from the dummy, that's actually quite nice. You can go around the 40k mark, but I'll show you some options for that later. 27k health which is huge and 16.4k stamina our mag recovery is 1.3 almost our stamina recovery is almost 1.2 and we've got health recovery out the nose as well it's actually really really nice now it does look like we're sitting on 55% crit chance that's actually quite inaccurate because we have our own buff here which pushes us to 61 spell pen is really really high just passively anyway so you don't even need to worry about that because we're already hitting cap with buffs coming in from other people and of course our resistances if we put those back on are sitting on 18 and 13k. Now, just bear in mind, champion points have been altered, so we do have some resistances in there as well, which do actually end up contributing to some of these flat stats. But we won't go over the complicated stuff as far as that's concerned. Just bear in mind, you can see your total resistance for each different damage type here. You can change that stuff later. Again, we'll go over it. But 64 points into Max Magicka. We do have a massive amount of spell damage as well, actually, which is a change for the easy sort, because usually it's quite low, but it's 4k, and that can go much higher. We are using flat food, max health, max magic food. Now, I know it doesn't show the stats there, but that's what you're looking at. 5395 and 4936. Now, why is our health and stamina, and even our Magicka, where it is? Well, the flat stats were changed. Everybody gets a boost to their flat stats when they start or when they have a character. The health is much, much higher now. So even with recovery food, with this particular setup, you can still sit on 20k health. With no food, you can sit on almost 20k health. It's stupid. In fact, you will. 20k flat out if you've got, I think, one buff from the dummy. Anyway, we are using the Thief Munda Stone. You can be Vampire Stage 1 if you want for the sneak passive, but you don't have to have it if you don't want to. That's pretty much it for the stats. Now, there are some stats missing, of course, that you can't see because you'll be in combat. So let's just hit the dummy real quick, just for a brief moment, so we can get our bonuses running. So if we were in a trial situation, very, very rigged, obviously, because of these stats here, your health goes to 29k. That's without Eben. Your 31k health in a trial. 37k max magicka and 18k stamina. You can block, dodge, and all that good stuff all day long. Loads of magicka, loads of spell damage, stupid amount of recovery. You get the idea. Let's dump the pet because otherwise it's going to keep hitting the dummy. Now, for those that haven't paid too much attention to the update itself, we have much higher flat bonuses to our stats. Higher weapon damage, higher spell damage, higher health, higher magicka and stamina, all that good stuff. That is to alter it slightly so that players are in a more comfortable position early on and later on players or higher players won't necessarily see the difference. The DPS was supposed to come down because mechanics are more important and there were just basically... Many people using the nuke it or die mentality, and that's not how the game is designed. So I'm going to go into the skills in detail, hopefully these make a bit of sense. I will go over them like I normally do, but we're going to be a bit quicker in this because I do want to get to the champion points to make things a little less confusing for people because I'm sure on the surface, looking at it, it's really, really scary. But again, I will go over everything. If you want to skip this, it's up to you, but if you do ask questions about it in the comment section below, obviously I won't be answering questions I've already explained. So here we go. Very very basic 
Summon Twilight Tormentor. This is in your Daedric Summoning skill line. Third ability you unlock starts off as Wing Twilight. Morph it to Summon Twilight Tormentor, not Matriarch. It's a very different one. That one gives you a heal. This will zap the target repeatedly forever. Unless you get rid of your pet. As long as you're in combat. If you wanted to hit a specific target, just heavy attack it and it'll change targets. But if you activate the ability, it will do extra damage. So this will cost you to reactivate it, although it's a little bit cheaper. Um, and it will do more damage to the target only if they're over 50% health. If they're lower than 50% health, don't keep reactivating this. You only have to press it once every 15 seconds. It's very easy to maintain and it will be in our rotation as well. Basically, even if you don't press that button, if you do forget, it's not the end of the world. She'll still be zapping people in the face. This is basically a free dot unless you want to boost it. Under 50% though, don't use it anymore. It will just do what it's doing. That has to be put on both bars because it's a pet. And unlike the Necromancer, which are far and forget, these are static ones. They stay with us. And if you swap bars, you have no pet and it dies. So you have to double bar it. Next is Daedric Tomb. This is our main spammable, although we will be weaving this with light attacks and heavy attacks, depending on how you are in your rotation at the time versus your recovery in the fight. So, fifth ability to unlock in a dark magic skill line starts off as Daedric Mines, morph it to Daedric Tomb. This is different. The other one will place mines around you. This one, you can actually target at long range and drop it on the enemy or under their feet or whatever. Very simply put, three mines on the ground last for 30 seconds unless they pop. Now, if you can line this up very carefully with the model's center point where it's grounded, you can actually make two of these fire at once. It takes a little bit of practice, but two can go off at once. It's massive damage. It counts as direct as well. It's magic damage specifically. Now, bear in mind, this does immobilize targets as well, if they can be immobilized. That is literally a root. It's not a stun. So if the tank is trying to pull this with chains, if an enemy is rooted, it's absolutely fine. It will still come in. If someone tries to blame you for the stun and CC in something, it's not your fault. Read the text there. It's not a stun. Now, this in the rotation will light attack spam occasionally, will heavy attack spam occasionally. But this is your main bread and butter for your damage. So get good at aiming this particular skill. It's on the ground, but it takes a bit of practice. Again, you can fire one all the time, obviously, if you're a good aim. But if you're a really good aim, you can fire two. It takes some getting used to as to which targets need to be placed where, but usually their central point, like I said. One very important thing to note, however. If you're in a group that want to coordinate with each other, and there's no ego being thrown around in the air, and your tank is willing to work towards their group's strengths, in some situations, you can place enemies near walls, near pillars, near the brazier you can see behind me, stuff like that. You can place enemies there, and if there is a collision box, which there should be, then you can place the mine still technically under the target, but it can land on the wall or land on the pillar. If you can apply that, you'll make three go off at once, and it's a dramatic increase to your damage output. However, the bonus to that only applies if you're smart enough to place things in the right locations. If you don't, you'll never get it. Just make sure you aim two. It's expensive though, so you've got to keep up your heavy attacks. Next up is Hardened Ward. Very simply put, this is your damage shield. This will protect you if you are taking damage as long as you apply it. Basically, this will give you a damage shield that will scale off of your max magicka, so the higher the better, but it will cap out at 60% of your max health. So the higher the health, the better the shield, if you've got the magicka to pull it. There's a 15k damage shield almost there. And if we actually get buffed by the target dummy, uh, so we've got a Warhorn running, for example. Uh, where's my skill? Let me check the tool tip again. 15.7k damage shield, that's insane. If you think you're going to die, activate this. You can take all the damage in the shield first before you actually hit your health. And yes, this does consider resistances. Don't spam it, but use it if you're in trouble. In a light as Nexus in a Major Skilled skill line, this is on your bar for passives. That's it, nothing else. Don't touch it. Leave it on your bar. Now, this obviously does increase your max magicka by 5% and does give you major prophecy, giving you a crit chance increase as well, which is very, very helpful. But this also, if you do use Major Skill passives, does have a bit of a benefit. However, for this particular build, we're not going to use that because it doesn't work in our rotation properly. So again, just leave it on your bar. Starts off as Mage Light, morph it to Inner Light. If you activate it, you're going to waste too much magicka. You're going to interrupt your rotation. It's not worth the increase to the... Uh, the heavy attack damage when we get to the passive later. There are other ways to acquire that. Next up is Mage's Wrath. Now this is your main execute. However, you do not have to use it. This is the first ability in the Stormcalling skill line. Starts off as Mage's Fury. Morph it to Mage's Wrath. That's very hard to say really quickly. Do that 10 times. So when the target is below 20% health, 
You can activate it and it will do extra damage and explode and do air of effect damage to nearby targets as well. If you apply it before 20%, it won't. However, if you apply it at 20% and then the target dips below 20% while it's on the target for less than 4 seconds, it will explode because it's like a little time bomb going off. People use this in PvP to get cheap kills a lot. But this is your main execute if the target is low health. So you've got two different health-based skills here. The Twilight, you don't want to activate that under 50% because it's useless. Only activate it above it. This one, you don't want to activate it above 20%, only under it, otherwise that's useless. However, if you are extremely good with your rotation and very experienced in placing mines, and you can, say 90% of the time, get two to fire, this is stronger, so you just keep up your rotation, and this can be changed for something more flat. If that's the case, change it to... Where's it gone? Bound Aegis, or Bound Aegis, or, Aegis, or however you want to pronounce it. Now, this is very simple. This will give you an 8% increase to your maximum magicka, and it will give you resistances as well. And it will give you a bonus if you activate it to block mitigation. So if you are in trouble, your tank just died, you're going to have to block a heavy attack you would normally die from. Activate this first, or while blocking, and you'll get a massive uh, boost to protection while doing so. Technically, just leave it on your bar, but that's a handy trick to learn. However, this alters our stats. So if we put on our potion resistance buff and all that good stuff, we'll put on this and the dummy as well. So we've got our pet and everything. You can see health and magic and all that good stuff. 39k magicka we now have. That's quite a lot. We start with 33. Just a warhorn and that buff and you are in business. So that's quite a substantial uh, increase. And also our resistances have been affected as well because we've got minor resolve as well as major. So we're up to 21 and 16. That's quite high. So the choice is yours. You can use the execute if you like. Or if you're more experienced, don't use the execute and just keep up your rotation using your mines. That will make more sense later. There will be a timestamp for it as well. Now, your main ultimate on your front bar is purely here for stats and oh shit situations. Dark magic suppression field starts off as negate magic. Put this on the ground. Big, big bubble. Does magic damage every half a second and stuns everything inside and silences it as well, so they can't cast stuff. This is a stun. Mines is not a stun, this is. But it's massive area of effect, really good damage, and a massive, like I said, oh shit button. Only use that in emergencies, especially in big ad pulls if you really have to. Back bar, however, Twilight was obviously double barred. We already went over that. Unstable Wall of Storms, this is your destruction staff skill line. Second ability to unlock starts off as Wall of Elements, morph it to Unstable Wall of Elements. It says Storms here because it's lightning. If you have any other element on your bar, so a different staff, then it will say something different. But basically, this goes on the ground and does damage every one second to everyone caught inside of it. If it's fire, it does fire damage, ice it does ice, and lightning, it does lightning damage, of course. But the benefit to this is if you do lightning damage, any enemy inside of it that gets caught with a concussion status effect, which is a random effect, if you're lucky, that happens from lightning, then you can knock them off balance. Off balance targets will take extra damage from your heavy attack, in fact 70% more, and you will gain back double resources for a full heavy attack while they're off balance as well. Now, if you were to use a flame staff, you wouldn't get the off balance bonus, but you can do more damage with it if the targets get hit with a burning status effect. If they don't, you won't. If they do, you will. For us, we're using the Lightning Star for the most part, but if you're in a situation where you can guarantee that your group has already brought enough off balance and you are not required to use your abilities to do so, then you can swap to a Flame Staff. If you don't have off balance in your group, you're wasting the potential for half of your build and you should actually go back to Lightning. So for the most part, 90% of the time this build uses Lightning Staff. Some of the time you might have a DK in your group for the extra flame damage and you might have off balance already covered by somebody else, in which case that's fine to use a Flame Staff instead. Now, something also very important to know. If you apply Lightning Damage and you do apply Concussion, not only will it knock them off balance inside this wall, from any Lightning by the way, um, as long as this wall is down, the concussion effect also applies minor vulnerability. Minor vulnerability will increase the damage everybody does to the target. So that's also quite helpful. So the higher the status effects, chances that you have, the better. We do have champion point passes for that. We do have destro staff passes for that. Very important. But in a nutshell, keep the wall down on the ground at all times. The way the build is designed, you must not hit anything outside of the wall. You need it to be in it. 
It's quite large, so you shouldn't be able to miss the targets. Bound of Storms is next. This is in our Storm Calling skill line. Second ability you unlock starts off as Lightning Form. Morph it to Boundless Storms. This is your main resistance buff. We'll give you major resolve, increasing physical and spell resistance by 5948, which is huge, especially alongside our minor, which is 2974, if you've got both of them active at the same time. This one just has to sit there. This one you do have to activate. But once you're on the front bar, you have both. Do not let this run out. It will make you run faster for a short period of time at the beginning. But above all, of course, not only does it give you the resistance buff, but it does do shock damage and error of effect. Close quarter error of effect. Every one second. Yes, that can, can apply concussion. Yes, inside your wall of elements, that does mean more off balance. Off balance has a, uh, a timer, though. It's uh, 15 seconds downtime, 7 seconds uptime. So be very careful with that and time your heavy attacks and your burst when you see off balance fired. Normally you'll see it pop up on your screen saying off balance because you made it happen. But if someone else made it happen on the target dummy, you're looking for a dark blue background with someone's head basically with little stars swimming around it. That's what it looks like. When it's immune, then it will be a really obnoxious dude standing there with his hands by his sides. Now, next up is Crit Surge. This is essential. This is in the same skill line. Starts off as Surge, morph it to Crit Surge, fourth ability you unlock. This needs to be active all the time, unless you use it as a swap out, which we'll get to in a moment. This will give you the ability to heal every one second from any crit damage that you do. And surprisingly, we are actually built for crit. So all you have to do is keep up your rotation and you will by default heal. If you let this run out, you will not heal. At the same time, it applies major sorcery and brutality. We don't really need Brutality because we're not using any weapon-based abilities or any stamina-based abilities. But we do want to take advantage of Sorcery because we are using a magical weapon and we are using magical-based skills. This can be applied in a potion if you prefer. So you can have uh, Spell Damage, Spell Crit, and Magicka back. But we're not. We're using Tripod. So we get Magic back, Health back, and Stamina back, and Recovery for all three. Because this already gives us this, and we've already got Prophecy, which is the Crit bonus you get from potions, on the front. Now, if you wanted to, you could swap this out in place of Bound Aegis, just like the front bar. So you've actually got a resistance buff on both bars, which is quite handy. But if you've got Combat Prey, you don't really need it. You'll just have the extra 8% Magicka. Why would you choose this over in a light on the back bar? Because if you're replacing this skill, you're going to want to have Major Sorcery anyway, and you're probably using a pot. If you're using a pot, you've already got the crit, you're covered. But this is quite helpful. So it's entirely up to you. You can have the flat stats or you can have the heal. I would highly recommend the heal. Depends on your group, however. Depends on how experienced you are. You could, of course, use Barb Trap if you really wanted to for the minor force, giving you extra crit damage. But if you've got Twilight in your group from perhaps a healer and you take the synergy, you can get that anyway. So, again, the choice is yours, but essentially you should probably keep on crit surge the majority of the time. In fact, I normally do. Next up is Lightning Flood. Same skill line. Surprise, surprise. Third ability down. Starts off with Lightning Splash. Morph it to Lightning Flood. Keep it on the ground. Anything caught inside of it will take damage every one second in the form of shock, and your friends can take a synergy of it and shock in air of effect. Yes, that can apply minor vulnerability and concussion, just like every other lightning skill, which means all of these stacked up is bound to make off balance happen. Then there's the Destro ulti. Destruction staff skill line, major devastating ultimate. Make sure you get elemental rage from Storm. This is the one that you can place on the ground. Lightning has two seconds longer. Flame increases the flat damage amount, but just bear in mind we're a sorcerer, we do have higher light and damage anyway. The difference, of course, is the status effects that you can get from it, because you can, of course, apply all the shininess from this as well. And it's pretty nasty. It's a very, very powerful AoE, but the Flame Staff um, version overall is going to give you roughly the same damage unless you have a Dragon Knight in your group applying engulf and flames if you have engulf and flames in your group which the target dummy does have then of course you are going to get more flat damage out of this if not then all you're doing is trading off 15 percent damage for two seconds more which is longer and more ticks and you've already got lightning damage as well in your passives so they're very very close but regardless of which one you're using whether it be fire or lightning you want this ultimate now, you can swap the ultimate out for the charged Atronarch if you prefer. It does have a synergy with it. If someone does take it, they get Major Berserk and so does your pet. This particular pet, although it's not applying from other pet rules, this is just an ultimate. 
It does shock damage over time and does area of effect shock damage as well. It's very, very cheap. So you can spam this if you want or in big, big pulls, hit your death royalty. You can actually slot this on the front bar instead of suppression field. But again, the content will vary depending on which one you want to take. Depends on what you're up against. Now, passives, the important stuff. You do need to understand passives in the Elder Scrolls Online. They are very, very important. In fact, more important than your major skills. So do understand how they work. This will reduce the health, magicka, and stamina cost of all abilities. This will heal you if you use dark magic skills, and it can happen once every 0.5 seconds. So if you place these mines on the ground and someone steps in one, but the other two are on the ground and someone steps in another one straight afterwards, that's two heals you just got. Very nice indeed. It's a spammable that heals you. Alongside of your crit surge as well, which is very, very handy. This is quite important. After blocking an attack, your next health, magic, or stamina ability cost is 15% less. Really handy there. And also, when you cast a dark magic ability, you get minor prophecy for you and your group, increasing your crit chance for 20 seconds. That's why at the beginning, when you saw me use the mine, I said I've got a buff. That's dark magic. It comes from there. You restore 300 magicka or stamina when one of your non-ultimate Daedric summoning abilities end. The resource of return dictated by the abilities cost so if you have something like this and you activate it and it ends you get stuff back if your pet ends and so on and so forth um this reduces the cost of your ultimates definitely want to get that down because then you can use your ultimates more often increases your health and stam recovery by 20 percent while having a daedric summoning ability slotted you have a pet on both bars no matter what you do with your choices you have this very handy indeed that is also um stacking with other bonuses as well which is quite handy this increases your max health by 8% while you have a pet active. We do. It's on both bars. We have the pet active. As long as it's not dead, we have the health bonus. We're really, really tanky. Storm calling. Massive. Increases your mag recovery. Excellent. We have stupidly high mag recovery for such a build because we rely on our heavy attacks to gain resources, but now we don't really need to as much, which is insane. Increases your physical and shock damage. At base, we have an increase to shock damage. No other class has that. Increases your damage done against enemies by 1% for every 10% current health they have. So the higher their health, the more damage you do. 100% health, you do 10% more damage. 90%, you do 9% more damage. And so on and so forth. The longer the fight goes on, obviously the, the scale of your damage goes down. So you're very bursty up front at the beginning of the fight. But we do count it out with our execute power. And of course, we've got some traits altered in our gear to allow for that as well. Increases your weapon and spell damage by 2% for each sorcerer ability slotted. We've got five on the front bar. This is Major Skilled, but the rest are all Sorcerer abilities, so we've got 10% spell damage. Back bar also applies. We have eight there, but if you change your ultimate, you'd have, you'd have 10. Desperate stuff is important. Try focus. Very, very important indeed. We are going to be heavy attacking on our front bar. I said that we have massive AoE. Why is that? Because if we heavy attack, we get our resources back. If we heavy attack, we do a damage over time effect to the target while we're channeling. And if we do a heavy attack... All enemies nearby will receive 100% of that damage themselves as well. Bear in mind, of course, penetration does need to be considered. So if the main target is um, debuffed to zero and the other targets are not, they'll get hit for less. But if they have the same pen values or same resistance values, they will get equal damage. Also bear in mind, crit damage doesn't count to aoe when it comes to this particular passive bonus here it's the flat value so if for argument's sake you hit the target for a 20k heavy attack per tick but you started critting and some of them went up to 30 or 40 the aoe around you would still consistently hit for 20. so this passive is very very important indeed make sure you get it first of all obviously but do definitely read it stack those ads make sure they're very close to each other heavy attack in the middle of a crowd of enemies and they will all go down rapidly especially if they're inside wall of elements make sure they are because if they go off balance this heavy attack ends up 70 percent stronger use your passives destruction staff abilities ignore 10 percent of the enemy spell resistance pretty straightforward there Increases your chance to apply elemental status effects. We want to apply elemental status effects. You have to be holding a Destro Staff to apply this bonus. Basically, any flat value of status will be enhanced. However, if you don't have a Destro Staff on, you won't get the passive. So if you are one of those builds that uses Destro on one bar, something else on another, when you switch to that something else, you lose this passive. For us, we've got double Destro. We're good. That will increase your chance of concussion, by the way. Now, if we have a Lightning Staff equipped, which we do, all of your area of effect damage is increased by 
Now, the majority of our build is actually Era of Effect. So we've got the Death Royalty or Negate Bubble. Even the Atronarch is actually AoE. Single target hitting, but it's got AoE bursts. This is Area of Effect. This is Area of Effect. This is Area of Effect. Our bread and butter and our heavy attack from our Lightning Staff is all Area of Effect. They are all boosted by this passive. Now, most people get this wrong. They think if your Area of Effect is hitting multiple targets, you get the boost. No, no, no. If the skill is flagged as an actual area of effect skill so it that's what it does that's when you get the boost most people think it's oh we don't have loads of targets we don't get the aoe boost you do you get it for the actual skill now yes we do have some direct damage abilities but the scale of this particular setup there was more coming from the area of effect than there was the single target and of course it really really helped to be able to nuke ads at the same time as killing a boss so the lightning staff overall did massively boost the crap out of this build but also it's part of our rotation if you heavy attack with a flame staff you hit a single target and it could feel like a blank if you don't crit if you heavy attack with a lightning staff everything around you dies very simple um when you kill an enemy with a destruction staff ability including a light or heavy attack you will actually get back 3600 magica very handy indeed make sure you get these passives armor passives were changed you no longer need five pieces to benefit from their buffs. But which ones do you take? So for this particular setup right now, we are using seven light. However, the variation of this is five light and two heavy, which also is a massive bonus to us. Now, there are some penalties which you can read through in your own time, but just bear in mind, obviously, there's good and bad for your choices. But... Seven light will give us massive reduction to effectiveness of snares on us and our sprint um, cost, which is really nice. We have increased magical recovery and increased reduction to cost when it comes to our skills. So really good sustain passive there. We have massive, massive uh, resistances towards um, spell resistance. Uh, increases your spell crit rate in per piece. So the more pieces you wear, the higher the crit. And your spell pen. This used to be 4884. Because you had to have 5 pieces and it didn't go anywhere near higher than that if you went over that. Now if you have 7 pieces, you can benefit from each individual piece. That's bonkers. Now, when it comes to the other ones, we're not using any medium armor. Although you can if you want the underwater passive. So we're going to ignore these. But one of the setups, we are using too heavy. Or you could here, if you change your monster set, to have two heavy pieces. There are penalties, of course. But the major bonus here, apart from having physical resistances, which is nice. Apart from having the extra health and return if you get hit, which is also nice. Um, the health is here, by the way. That's health recovery. This is important. If we have two pieces of heavy, like we will have on one of the setups you actually restore 8% more from your heavy attacks. So you'll lose some pen, you'll lose some crit, but you'll get more back from your heavies, which we're doing anyway. Massive bonus there. Very, very nice indeed. I would encourage you to actually get one or two pieces of heavy regardless. But one of the setups does have two heavy. And this also increases your healing received. We're healing all the time. Now, uh, we are going to need... We're not going to need Fighter's Guild. Unless you get Barb Trap. If you get Barb Trap, put it on the back bar instead of Crit Surge. Up to you. There's your minor force. This particular setup doesn't have minor force. One of the variations does. Not the end of the world. If you don't have it, you can take a synergy off your friend. If you have that, you'll want intimidating presence. If you don't, you won't. Also, you won't need these unless, of course, you sit on the back bar for too long, in which case, rip. These require you to slot a fighter's guild ability now to get the ultimate back. We're not slotting one. We don't need them. Major's guild is important for this passive. This increases your magicka and your magical recovery for having a major skilled ability on your bar. For each one, in fact. We have one. This, however, if you activate the skill, will give you Empower, increasing your light or heavy attack damages, uh, damage by 40%. Which is massive. Why don't we use that? Well, we can't fit that in our rotation. However, if you have someone in your group, using Gallonway, for example, the tank, and they're constantly blocking attacks... They will grant you Empower. You can have it in your rotation almost all day without actually applying a skill. 
So while you may on the surface hit very, very hard with this build, both single target and area of effect, as long as you keep up those lights and heavies, if someone is giving you empower, you've just gained a crap ton of damage. So while this passive isn't something that we're necessarily going to utilize, understand what empower means to you as a build. Or with this build, rather. Undaunt is very important, of course. 4% back for every synergy you take. Every single one you pick up will give you resources back. Take the bloody synergies. Don't leave them on the floor. They are group bonuses. Pick them up. And this will give you max health, max stamina, and max magicka by 2%, in fact, overall, for each different type of armor worn. Of course, you could wear one medium, one heavy, and five light if you wanted to. But one of the setups requires two heavy. So take advantage of five light and two heavy if you can. You'll get 4% bonus out of that. And if you really want to, I mean, you could drop one light piece. Because before you needed five pieces to guarantee your bonuses. Now you don't. Just understand that you'll lose some passives. So if you're happy to lose one and replace it with a medium piece instead, just to get some of the nice shinies, it's up to you. Obviously, optimizing the overall build, I wouldn't recommend it. But if you do like some of the passives and they do affect you in a way that you can utilize and go nuts, you now have the freedom to do that. We're a cat. If you didn't know that already... This is not a high elf. Can you still be a high elf? Yes, you can. The high elf was very, very close, still extremely powerful for this particular setup, especially in the face of the enemy. That's been going to be fairly important when it gets to the champion points. However, the Khajiit hitting the target from behind, so not a dragon, basically, hitting the target from behind with certain champion point setups did hit about 3 or 4k harder in some situations. So... To argue that, if you're hitting dragons in the face all day long, you're going to get a little bit more out of the high elf. If you're playing as a DPS should play for the rest of the fights in the game, and not standing in the face of the tank, and actually standing behind the enemy, you're going to get more out of the Khajiit. However, any race in the game is absolutely fine. The choice is completely yours, and the build won't break either way. You will still be able to complete all content with it, no trouble whatsoever, no matter what difficulty you put it on, if you know what you're doing. Let's go over the passives. Health recovery, stamina recovery, and mag recovery. Fantastic. Max health, max stamina, max magic. Very nice across the board. And increases your critical damage and crit healing by 12%. You have a huge crit bonus. Very handy indeed. This, alongside some of your champion points, stacks up really nicely. Get medicinal use. Makes your potions last 30% longer. They will outlast their cooldown, which means they are permanent buffs. Do not let your consumable buffs run out. We are using tripods, and if you want to, you can use spell pots. If you want to know how to make those, I will be putting it in the written guide. But alongside that, don't forget to visit the website for the alchemy guide, because there, there is a potion maker. A physical potion maker app that you can take advantage of. And if you want to mess around with combinations of them to see what works for you, it's all there for you. Now we're going to go into the gear. Who's scared? Did we change everything? Because he's a cat. <laughs> okay. So we are using Undaunted Infiltrator Light and stuff. Because we are. Because it's still feckin' mega for the design of the build. Massive, massive damage output for light and heavy attacks. We are utilizing them all the time. We have light attacks on the back bar. We have heavy attacks on the front bar. We actually have more lights than we do heavy. But... Occasionally, we are, of course, using light attacks as a spammable alongside our minds if our rotation is on point and our resources are up. So this will actually benefit us for every single in-between hit that we use. All you have to do is use a magic skill, which we do all the time. However, just bear in mind, you cannot pre-buff anymore. Before, you could pre-buff and have it ready before you get in a fight. Now, it doesn't count until you're in combat. So, light and stuff on the front. Three jewelry, one infused, two bloodthirsty, spell damage on all. Yes, it comes with stamina. But that's a huge benefit to us because we have a huge stamina bar to be able to block, dodge, and get out of trouble. And we've got some block passives now due to champion points. So while this is technically a... Not stamina set. This is a medium set with stamina bonuses. We are utilizing it for its use of magic skills to boost our basic skills. And alongside that, we're still using Infallible Aether, which has spell crit, spell damage, minus Slayer, increasing all damage you do by 5%, spell crit again. So this is heavy, this one. This one is uh, very useful for our survival resources, dodge and block and all that kind of stuff. This is heavy for our damage resources, giving us a double crit bonus and flat damage as well. Not only that, fully charged heavy attacks do 900 more damage. 
with the pop at the end. 900 sounds very small, but the scaling system for lights and heavy attacks, especially during off balance, and this and this combined means that that wind up and then pop at the end is massive. Do we apply loads of concussion? Yes. Does that mean minor vulnerability is up all the time? Yes. That also means that this last part of the five piece bonus is hit and miss. We probably have that anyway. But just in case we don't have a status effect at the time, we've got that for free. So we can apply minor vulnerability all the time. The main reason we want the fifth piece bonus is not for the minor vulnerability since we've mostly got it controlled. It's for that pop of the heavy attack. That makes a huge difference. These stacking together, really, really strong alongside this. Maelstrom Lightning Staff. Yes, you can use Flame Staff if off balance is covered in your group. If it's not, don't even try it. If you're using Lightning, put a Shock Glyph on it. If you're using Fire, put a Flame Glyph on it. it has to be infused. This does have a pen bonus, which is meh. We don't need that. So you don't have to get the perfected version. You can actually just go in on normal. In fact, the entire build can be farmed on normal, except for the monster set. This will put uh, extra damage again into your lights and heavies. If the targets are inside Wall of Elements, and yes, it stacks with Empower, yes, it stacks with Undaunted Infiltrator, yes, it stacks with Aether, and yes, also, it does stack with all the different bonuses that we've got already. Off balance, heavy attacks are going to hurt. The monster set is, of course, Jeff. He's a Daedrov. Light or heavy attack, 33% chance to spawn him. He will slap and breathe fire until he dies or disappears and then he can be respawned again he's with us all the time very strong indeed we are using two light here but you can go with um, whatever weights you preference based on the passives you choose for your armor now this can be altered you can if you prefer swap out this for roaring opportunist roaring opportunist also has a bonus if you do a heavy attack it scales off of your max magicka or your spell damage whichever one of the two is highest and once you get to a certain peak you'll be able to have a higher duration on the bonus based on how we're set up we can actually get full benefits from it given everybody in the group major slayer it's very strong but that's a choice again you can get that on normal as well if you don't want the perfected version everything can be farmed on normal difficulty except for this helmet when it comes to our other choice, that's when things get a little bit tricky. You want Sororia Perfected Lightning Staff on the front. Very specific. Both uh, front options, by the way, must be um, precise. Then, you want the chest of Medusa. Any other body piece of Medusa. Go legs, because the resistances. And then three jewelry of Medusa. Medusa even. Can't even get my words out. So now your heavy set is on your jewelry and your body. And the rest of the unfallible Aoife stuff, you want to swap out for Sororia if you can help it. And I can't find it. Where's it gone? There we go. So now what you've got is you've got five pieces of Sororia and five pieces of Medusa. You now have Minor Force giving you a crit damage bonus. This option is your single target variation. So the first setup... You can use for absolutely everything, and I would highly recommend it no matter what. Really good single target. Massive, unmatched, almost AoE. Can't go wrong with it. Especially solo. This one, if you want to go a little bit more serious with single target, and you want to deliberately lower your area of effect damage, this will do about 6, sometimes 7k more in single target only. However, it's going to be a little bit trickier to maintain because you have to make sure you stay in this little damage circle here. Otherwise, you won't keep your spell damage up. Again, you don't have to get perfected. You can get it on normal. So to go over it very, very quickly again, Sororia and Medusa, if you want to go more single target, Undaunted Infiltrator and Unfallible Aether for pretty much everything. Yes, of course, you could put on the Ring of the Pale Order if you're using it for Vatashran, but you honestly don't need it because it's really hard to die anyway if you keep your crit surge up. Now, for crafting options, if you are relatively new, all you need to do really is put yourself on two basic sets for Magicka, which won't really cause you too much grief. And, of course, not too much complication. So you can put Julianus on the body and Acuity on the jewelry and front bar weapon. Yes, you're going to need some crafted skills, high crafting skills to be able to make it, but just remember you can buy them off other players or off the market or whatever. 
You can get them from other people. You don't have to put in the work yourself. You just have to make sure you got the gold for it. And it's quite cheap for the most part. Do a couple dungeons. Ask if anyone's making them. It won't take you that long to get. This back bar weapon, by the way, you want to change that to willpower because you don't want to double bar acuity. Acuity, you want to control on the front bar only. That also will be on the website. Divines on everything, by the way, if that wasn't obvious. So, now the hard stuff. It's not that hard. For people panicking about the champion points, about how much you do or don't need, the cap now is 3,600. Before, it was 810. If you have more than 810 currently, you are now able to use them all. Now, if you are specced to just do one type of damage, so magic and spell damage, you're not looking at anything else, and you're not looking at resistances, you're not looking at health or healing, none of that stuff, you only need 1,350. And you can actually get every single passive that you require. Plus, you'll have enough points to get four slottable skills. Now, if you want to get some of the hybrid stuff and the healing bonuses as well, but without any resistance bonuses, you just need 1,620. If you want the maximum you can get with the resistances bonus uh, bonuses applied, but without the healing stuff, there's like one node for that, then you're looking at 1,940. If you want your four slottables, every single flat stat and alternate flat stat, so magicka and stamina, spell damage and weapon damage, healing bonuses and resistances, everything that you can actually get and apply, you need 2,100 and you're done. The extra champion points after that is for convenience, is for quality of life. So you can only slot four nodes at a time, but if you want to change them, you would have to respec and buy a different one. The more points you have, the more of them you can unlock. That means you don't have to respec when you want to swap stuff out. You just buy them both and then change as and when you need to. So it is for convenience. Prior to that, you still have very, very good options. Now, if you are around 8, 10, you can still perform extremely well. If you're lower than that, you can still perform extremely well. I am going to put these on the website. Before, it was just, here's an 810 build, you're done. Um, and I glazed over where you should aim for. I'm going to give different accounts for what you need when you're lower level, mid-level, high level, max, etc., etc. It's all going to be there. But we're going to show this from the perspective of a character that can acquire all of the basic ones needed so let's say 1350 so you want to get all of these kind of light yellowy nodes not the healing ones they're not that important the magical ones are the stamina one probably not so much for now but once you can get them all unlock them all but you don't need to go into resistances if you want to stay squishy you don't need to go into heals if you want to stay squishy just get every single one that you can Again, I will put this on the website. I will explain all you need. But to start with, you obviously want to get your crit bonuses. So you can unlock this stuff here. You want to get these in here. But you don't have to spec both ways. You can just go one way and then come back to the other stuff later. You are not going to need a huge amount. But what is important is the slottables. The ones that you slot. You're going to want these flat bonuses. You want your crit up. So get that as soon as you can. Maybe even just put 10 points in here to unlock this. You want to get your magical bonuses. You want to get your flat passive bonuses to penetration and then status effect and then spell damage as well. You want to get those. So that's what you want to look for first. But the four slottables, you want to get these as soon as you can. You need this here, which will give you 10% increase to damage over time. You want this, which will give you increased damage to direct damage ability. So your mines, your light attacks, that kind of stuff. You want this, which will give you area of effect damage, which we are specced into. And then you want this. If you're behind the target, you will increase all crit damage you do by 15%. If you're flanking or behind or whatever. If you are fighting a dragon and you're not behind the target, take this off and replace it with this one. This is less, granted. But it's still a crit damage bonus and it will give you a really nice damage output in front of the enemy. If it's not a dragon, 99% of the time you should be behind the target. So you want this one. So again, you want direct damage, area of effect and damage over time. And then your crit bonus, whichever one of the two you've got. 
or whichever one of the two you can use at the time. Something else you are going to want to invest your time into, however, is this. This will make you do 4,000 Oblivion damage if you kill something. You're going to kill rooms of enemies. They're going to blow up like a rather large dramatic domino effect. One will blow up into another, into another, into another, into another. Again, you'd have to swap this out for that if that's the case because you're not going to be behind the enemy. You're just going to be in a big cluster of ads. So this one here, this one here, and this one here is your interchangeable slot. Now, the rest of them are not that important for now. They will depend very much on situations you get put into. And the resistance ones, again, if you are in a situation where you need resistances, that's up to you to spec into this. This is purely just talking about damage alone. Three over here and one of these three here. That's it. The green tree is literally all for quality of life in regards to gold or stealing or running fast in the overland or getting more mining materials or um, fishing stuff. All that. Yeah, there's a fishing passive. How cool is that? All that kind of stuff is down to you. I'm not going to dictate to you what you should and shouldn't use for this tree. What I am going to tell you to aim for, however, is you do want to make sure that you get the treasure hunter, which will increase the quality of loot in chests. You want to get that. You also want to make sure that you get this, which will basically have a chance to not consume a soul gem. And then there's a rather shiny one, which is quite cheap, which increases your food duration and drink, so XP pots. Whenever you use a potion, you might not consume it, so that helps. There's one more massive one. This is huge. This here, it's a passive, it's not a slottable, you can get it quite early. Reduces the decay rate of your enchants on a weapon. If you max that out, you will never ever use a soul gem on your weapon again. So, this is a quality of life tree, but those are some important things that you might want. Red tree doesn't have to look as scary as it looks on the surface. Again, there's some of these. These are passives. These you can get eventually and just max them out. You will unlock them. So take your time, get them as and when you can. But a bit of a game plan. You want this. This will give you max health. Slot it. That's a slottable bonus. You want this here. This will increase your recovery for all three types. Slot that too. Once you get to here, you've got survival instincts, which if you are affected by a status effect you will actually have a 25 percent reduction to cost for your skills during that time how many times do you sit there on fire this is going to be a bonus and you also want to get this one here if you kill an enemy you get magic back in fact 1500 magic back so big room of enemies you kill them all in aoe with your aoe bonus to damage with your oblivion explosions for each one that dies plus your magic back for killing them with this plus your magic back from your destro skill line if it's a destro skill it's very hard for you to run out especially if you're affected by a status effect and your cost is down your mines that are very very expensive that you use a heavy attack to maintain now got a lot lot easier to spam so again i will go on the website and put all the different setups that you should do to optimize your set um build depending on how many champion points you have no, I'm not going to go 501, 502, 503. That's stupid. But what I will do is I will go for a mid-level one, an old school cap, so 810, a new glass cannon type scenario, and then I'll show you what you can put into, obviously, what to expect once you've got everything you need. But the most important things to note right now while journeying kind of through the passive ones is unlocking these very specific four in each tree slottables. You literally pick it up like this, and you put it in whichever slot you want to put it in. You can have four at a time for each tree. So, for the blue ones, uh, the red ones even, we want to have these four, which are... Let's call them out so you can hear them. Boundless Vitality, Rejuvenation, Survival Instincts, and Siphoning Spells. And for the blue one, for now, you want Backstabber. You definitely want these three. Deadly Aim, Thermitage and Biting Aura. These three no matter what, but make sure you do unlock uh, Fighting Finesse and Occult Overload just in case. So again, that will be on the website in much more detail because there's a lot to go over there, but hopefully that was somewhat insightful as to what to expect out of the character once you slot all those nice shinies. 
Again, even if you're a very low player, you can still go for some of those really early on. Above all, though, definitely in the red tree, get that health buff. You're going to need it. Now, rotation. Very simple. You've seen it all before. Keep up your crit surge. Keep up your boundless storms. In the fight, you will do a back bar rotation. Blah -de blah -de blah. You'll do a front bar rotation. Blah -de blah -de blah again. Every time you go back to the back bar, you will repeat the same process. But one rotation, you will apply crit surge. Throw some shapes. Next rotation, use boundless storms. Throw some more shapes. Come back to the rotation. Crit surge. You get the idea. Every alternate rotation, you will use an opposite buff. If you're slotting it. Start with the back. Make sure your buffs are on. Apply. Light and flood. Light attack, whichever buff is due. Light attack, wall of elements. Swap bars. That's also known as unstable wall of elements. That's it. That's your back bar. One dot on the ground. One buff which is due to be cast. Then light attack, wall, swap bars. Front bar is very, very simple. Light attack first to make sure your glyph fires. And fire your mines. Heavy attack. Mines. Heavy attack. Cast your pet. That will already be out, by the way. You're casting it for the buff. That one there. And swap bars. Lightning. Light attack. Cast your buff. Light attack. Wall. Swap. Light attack mines. Heavy. Mines. Heavy. Pet. Swap. Now, if you're more advanced, you can get out another mines on the front bar. Which will be light mines. Heavy. Mines. Heavy. Mines again. And then once that's done, light attack. Pet. Swap. So you've got an extra skill there. If you're very advanced, pay attention to off-balance. Make sure that you can maintain your resources and utilize off-balance for your heavy attack rotation, which you just saw. And get back all your resources. In between those stages, if your bar is very high and you can keep it up, your front bar should look basically like this. Four or five of those. Light attack, pet, swap. If you do that and you can maintain it, especially if you've got um, Hollow Fang in your group, your bar should be absolutely fine. But by the time you finish your next rotation, the front bar rotation again should be on an off-balance one. That's when you want to do this with your heavies. And then continue. So one rotation can be heavy. Next rotation can be light. That will take some practice. If you're not advanced enough to do that yet, ignore everything I just said and stick to the heavy rotation. You will be absolutely fine. You'll never run out of juice. Your buffs will never fall off. It's going to be very hard for you to die and things will melt. And that's pretty much it. Just bear in mind, of course, let's dump the pet so it doesn't get in the way because it tends to do that. Your mines are very important. You do have to learn to place them. Aim your cursor at their grounded point. That's a model. Imagine like a big, big square box and it has a center on the floor. It's grounded. That's what you're looking for. Two mines at a time. At the moment, it's the two back ones. If you aim at slightly different, you'll get the two front ones instead. It's it's tricky to start with to get used to. But once you've mastered where to aim it, you can do it even from somewhere as far back as this. Two went off at once. Now, if they're up against the wall like this, you'll see that the mine will land on the wall. Or in a straight line almost. All three will go off. But you've got to center on the target properly. If you do this, you're only going to get one. In fact, none there. If you aim it properly, you'll get two. So it takes a bit of practice, but once you've got it, you will do some serious damage. And if you are in content and one of these is on the ground, the boss only gets hit by one. Oh no. But an ad is now running in. Free damage. Don't have to cast it. Let him pop. Carry on with the rest of your rotation. The key point to this is you must always maintain your buffs. And you must maintain your wall of elements above all. If nothing else is firing, at least wall swap heavy stuff inside of it, they will die. Again, with the execute rotation, basically you replace your mines with um, Major's Wrath if you're comfortable. However, if you're very experienced, dump Major's Wrath entirely and keep up your mines because you will do a lot more damage with them if you can fire more than one on the target at a time. Every single target in the game, regardless of their size, whether they are tiny or huge, can always make two fire. You just have to get used to their hitbox. 
Now, if you're looking to see what you should be hitting, I mean, the dummy is a very rigged situation. It's got a limited amount of buffs on it, but also a, a massive amount of buffs on it. So there's some missing, there's quite a few missing, but there's also a lot on there that you might see in an everyday situation. It's not saying those buffs are going to be 100% uptime in your trial or group or dungeon or whatever situations, because let's face it, they won't. But for that situation, for that dummy, just to demonstrate what it can do, this is what you're looking at with the AoE setup. And this is what you're looking at with a single target setup. Both do have very good area of effect, but the first one is obviously much, much more optimal for big ad pulls, whereas the other one is more about single target bosses. Both are fine in all content, no matter what, though. That's a substantial amount of damage. However, bear in mind, this build does rely on heavy attacks to maintain the resources, which means when you do have someone throwing out Gallonway, your heavy attacks are extremely dramatic and your DPS as a character will go through the bloody roof. That's not demonstrated on this dummy. Didn't do that in this video. But if you want to try it out yourself, of course, get someone in here with maybe a Necromancer constantly casting you with Empower. That can help also. You can see the difference there. In content, it's very, very strong. Remember, this doesn't test the viability of a build. Going into content does. And this is very strong in content. Now, all the serious stuff is out of the way. Let's go to fashion. So, we are sitting here with some rather different stuff today. We have a... An Assassin's League Helm, which is actually a heavy. We have Apostle Chest, which is light. It was a robe in the past, but now it's the uh, the jerkin, so it's got the uh, without the dress part. You can have that if you want. The shoulders are also Apostle Light. The hands are Dramathra Braces, so they're medium. The belt is also Dramathra Medium. The legs are Apostle Heavy. The feet are Dramathra Medium as well. The staff is, of course, Ebon Shadow, because we all love Ebon Shadow. And the back one is, of course, Abnathan, which is an old uh, collectible. You might still be able to find that on the market if someone's given them out for cheap. Who knows? Now, the colors we're using are a little different as well. We're actually using... Oops, wrong one. I just changed my color. That was dumb. So, we're actually using that. We're using uh, Black Reach Blue. And the black we're using is from Vatashran. So we're using the Void Pitch, which is just down here. You don't have to use these if you don't have them. Obviously, just use what you've got to hand. But that one is a solo achievement, so nice and easy. Um, he says, it's not easy. It takes practice. The other black we're using is uh, Legate's Black, but you can still use the same one if you really want to. It's just a bit more dramatic. Or you can use Falmore Black as well. There's a few different grays and blacks you can get away with. Obsidian's not too bad, but some of them start going into silver. But those are the three major colors that we're using. The blue, the black, and the gray. So, hopefully that helped. Hopefully that wasn't too boring. Hopefully you are not scared of the new champion point system. And hopefully, of course, you understand that the damage was meant to come down so that people play more mechanics rather than just that default nuke it and win because that's not how the game's designed. However, we didn't get that much of a drop at the moment. So we're still in a very, very high DPS place if you are experienced. So there's going to be a lot of mechanics still skipped. Thank you very much for watching. Huge appreciate the support. If you are not subscribing on YouTube, please do hit that button. It is free. Furthermore, if you want to help support outside the channel to help keep me doing this, there are some links in the description below for Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, the website zonogaming.com. Definitely go and check that out. The written guides are going to be there, as is the potion maker. And of course, you can catch me live on Twitch every day except Wednesdays from 10 p.m. UK time. Unless, of course, I say otherwise on one of the many social medias that I'm on. Once again, thank you very much for watching. Definitely put your comments in the section below to see if you like it or lump it. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.